Hello Divinity and RPG fans, this is John Carr with the Mac Gamecast, and I am back today with another tutorial, and today we are going to cover uh, general tips and tricks about the game, and a lot of maybe uh, just handy little things and some info about the UI and the difficulty levels and things like that, so let's get to it. Uh, right away I wanted to actually talk about the difficulty, so it defaults to normal, of course, you can change this even anytime, real time, like live in the game, even in a fight. Options, game, difficulty. I like to play on hard because I played so much normal, it's too easy for me. But um, the way this works is you can just hit apply and accept, and it'll modify this in real time. So let's talk about the differences in difficulty. So in another video, um, maybe my character sheet video, I'd wondered why I had this from boost minus 25%. And a uh, YouTube viewer helpfully pointed out to me uh, what the reason for this was. It's because I'm playing on hard. You know, I should get reduced vitality. So then I asked him about the other difficulties, and he gave me a link to the Divinity Wiki, which I've now put in all my video descriptions, and there I, I read the rest of it. So, but if you haven't gone there, um, I will. I'll tell you the tell you what it is. So on normal, the only change is you have plus 15% vitality, and there's no changes otherwise to you or the monsters. On easy, you actually have plus 60% vitality and a plus 20% chance to hit the monsters. So, for example, right now you see I have 400 HP on this guy. If I were to go into options, turn this on to easy, apply that, and now I suddenly have 639 HP because you now get a massive, not only do you not get a minus health, you get a massive health boost. And if I were to put this on normal, you could see my health would probably be maybe around 500. Yeah, 514, because I'm just getting a regular vitality boost, 15%. So um, let's put it back on hard. So on easy, your chance to hit goes up by 20. So this means warriors and anyone from ages, again, doesn't really matter, but anyone else trying to hit stuff, the chance to hit will be super easy, you would never need a bless spell, you could fight enemies probably two levels above you, and have a 90-100% to 100 chance to hit, and it would be very easy, so easy is easy. Normal's normal, and hard, um, not only do you lose 25% HP, but um, you actually have minus 10% chance to hit on everything, even on enemies every level. The enemies have a plus 10% chance to hit you, and they have plus 25% monster HP on hard. So hard is actually hard. Um, but I played this game so much I enjoy it. Normal is too easy for me most of the time. Uh, this is actually different different characters than... Um, sorry, I have my I forgot to close my Skype and my email, but I don't want it to have out a video and ruin it, so you'll hear little background noises. These are two different characters I made. I'm actually messing about with hybrids right now, which I'll be actually making another video on, probably my next video, but so it's the difficulty levels, new players, stick to normal, but if you're getting your butt kicked, maybe switch it to easy, but in theory, if you're watching my videos, normal shouldn't be a problem with you, for you. So let's talk about some other handy things. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot around the UI, you know, there's buttons all up here in the left, there's buttons all up here on the right, and of course you have buttons all along the bottom, so Let's just take a UI overview, and the upper left's your party, and something I often change frequently is formations. So it defaults always to this square grid, which doesn't really show up because we don't have four people. But um, I often like to use my default formation as the side-by-side, -side, so that way we start combat next to each other, generally speaking. Um, but if I'm navigating traps and other hazardous areas, I'll put this line formation so they're behind each other like this. Um, those are my two favorite formations. Of course, you can, you know, switch it around. This will be less... This is less demonstrative with less party members, but um, just remember you can change the formations how you like, but you have to click once to the apply the formation. Um, your portraits, of course, are up here, but you can access things directly if you want to click on them although I like to just use the hotkeys. Um, as far as the tutorial shows this, but in case for some reason you skip the tutorial, you can actually drag your characters apart 
until the chain's broken. This works with companions, and then your characters no longer follow each other. They are then independent. And this is needed to solve some like puzzles and stuff like that where you have to stand on things. Or sometimes I do this for combat when I want one character um, to approach from one end, pretend I'm fighting these guards, maybe I want this guy to approach from over here or something. That's a, that's a way you can split things up around the world. Um, what else are we going to do? You have a bunch of buttons up here, of course. These are all accessible by hotkeys, but, um, you know, M is your map, which has, you know, is your map. I've explored just about everything in Sysil. Um, shows you the location of waypoints and stuff. Uh, you can actually do custom map markers. I can't recall if I mentioned this in my last video, but, um, hey. Oh, we have to click. Okay, so you actually can, I think I said you, you can set markers, but you can't give inscriptions. It turns out you can, so for example, I could set a marker over here as fire area. And the marker is, I don't know where it went. Um, oh, there we go, test. Oh, there it is, fire area. So you can actually mark things if you want. How do you remove? Okay, and right click removes them. So that's convenient. Um, and of course, you can review your recipes, review all the dialogues. I don't have any secrets. Review all your quests. Just poke around that. Um, but all these keys are located up here. Um, let's talk about multiplayer menu for a moment. It's a connection menu. There's no hotkey that I know of. It's at the very top. So if someone's in your game, uh, actually, you can just directly change this. For some reason, it always seems to default to nobody. I like to leave it on friends only, because I only have a few people people I play this with. If people actually join your game, they'll show up here, and there's a assign characters button here, and you can give them, oops, forgot it does that too. You can uh, assign them which characters you want, or I believe it also shows up here in game menu, assign characters. And that way, if you have henchmen, because normally um, you can't get your henchmen to change control unless you like dismiss them and have your friend recruit them again. But that's an easy way to do it just by assigning characters. I can't show it because no one's in my game right now. Um, let me see. Let's talk about inventory really quick. Um, so say for example I have three resurrection scrolls on my main guy and let's say my other Battle girl and war guy, you know, creative. Um, maybe she needs a rest scroll, or maybe she needs some gold. So you hold down shift and then drag, and it lets you split. What's going on? There we go. It lets you split the stacks. So I can split it up to one, and then I can send it over to her. Uh, he's hoarding all the money, so maybe I'll split that up, and then send it over to her. And uh, that way, she's got some goodies. Of course, she already had snacks. She didn't really have any money. So now she has lots of money. Now she has... Of course, she already had a bunch of red scrolls. But maybe you have other companions in your party. They need them. Let's split those up and send them over to somebody else. Uh, that's an easy way to split stacks. And send things to people. You can just click. Of course, you can drop it, destroy it. Send it to the homesteads. I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't been there yet. But if you've been there yet, you know what it is. You can send it directly to it. Of course, you just use it, and that's just an easy way to swap things back and forth. Of course, you can also open um, what am I doing? Both inventories and drag and drop between them, if you want as well. It's also a decently easy way to do things if you really want. Um, as an F quick FYI, you actually can modify your character appearance later in the game um, using a special mirror. You can actually even change your gender and everything, which I, basically it's the initial character creation just without any of the skill or modifications. Um, I found that a little disconcerting because I like the fact that I've created my characters at the start, but if you really want or for some reason really just like your character, you can actually modify them later. You're not locked in forever. I also don't want to spoil anything, but you do have a fast travel system outside the waypoints, um, and that's using the pyramids. That's not too big a spoiler, really, in my opinion, but I don't really want to get into it. But if you have the pyramids, the buttons over here below the map, I had trouble finding it the first time um, I, I picked it up. In fact, I think I even may have reloaded, like thinking I was stuck. So that's over here, and it gives you fast travel to anywhere. 
Um, so that's handy. Um, let's talk about camera rotation. Normally your camera is locked to a certain rotation in the game. Something like this or this, I'm estimating. But I've actually got full camera unlocked all the way, which I find very handy and I recommend everyone do because uh, a lot of times in combat or when searching rooms, you just, you're like stuck in this corner and you can't see the person or you're trying to find some chest or chase down a rat or whatever. And if you zoom in, it will, you know, it will do this. The camera will uh, shadow or pierce, whatever you want to call it. But that's just annoying when I can just as easily rotate the camera around. Now it does give you a warning because it's not actually meant to do this from a design perspective. So you'll see weird stuff, you know, like this or whatever on the tree instead of nice pretty tree from this angle because that's they only designed it the assets to be viewed from a certain angle but uh, I recommend using it anyway because it's very convenient just to do that go into options game you gotta scroll down 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 and do unlock rotation see so, yeah, it gives you a warning but you want to do it anyway and then you have full camera rotation which is real nice so that's something I'm a fan of um, what else can we talk about? Uh, let's talk about um, actions. So I don't want to go initiate combat because I've killed most anything except for like the high level areas and I don't want to spoil anything in my videos so I'm staying in town for the most part. But um, you know sometimes when you're in combat you misclick, pretend these are some guards and I'm trying to attack them or something but maybe I misclick and instead I start running all the way over there or maybe I've run through some poison or fire or something. Here, I can actually make an example relatively. The characters do try and ignore pathing. Like, if I click here, the character doesn't really want to go. Of course, I just did, so now she'll burn. But maybe I didn't want to do that. Maybe there's an enemy on the other side, and I go to attack, and I see my characters running through it. You can actually right-click, and you'll instantly stop whatever you're doing. Right-click stops everything. Um... I guess at a certain point you can't do that, but say you start to cast a spell or something, it's not the spell you wanted, instead of thinking you have to cast it to get rid of it, just right click and it'll cancel, no matter what it is. Just right click. Or if you misclick move, sometimes especially when you're a ranged character, like a mage or a ranger, and you're trying to attack someone with a spell or an attack, and they when you're in combat, people have animations and they're shifting from side to side and stuff, and very often you'll click on them just as they move, so it misses them and your character instead clicks on the ground and thinks it has to move, so it'll start running across the screen, wasting all your action points or wherever. Um, most people panic, including me, and just hit spacebar to end their turn, but you don't want to do that. All you have to do is right click, your character will instantly stop whatever they're doing. So remember, right click stops just about anything. But uh, we'll prevent your misclick, save your action points, one up to end your turn in combat. Um, another useful tip, once again, I've already really looted everything, but um, you can, if you happen to find loot, you can actually save your game just before a chest, especially like high level one, and um, you can, if you don't like what you find inside, you can actually reload and it will re-roll the loot tables and you'll find something else. So I'm basically running two fighters, Two hybrid fighters and maybe I open a big chest and all it has is a bunch of bows and daggers inside or something and it's like well I don't care about that I'm just gonna sell it so I could reload and maybe I'll find in a sweet sword or a piece of armor I could use um, some obviously some of you may not want to do that but I'm just letting you know it can be done if you know you're really unhappy with the loot you're getting so just make sure to save and another thing about saving save often save all the time um, the game can be very unpredictable in combat, or certain even out of combat scenarios can get you killed. Um, so just make sure to save basically after every fight, maybe after you spend 5 or 10 minutes running around town doing stuff. Just save often. It's easy, it only takes a moment, and uh, it'll save you a lot of headache. As the game quotes say, save often to spare your blood pressure. Uh, the, pretty much the last thing I want to talk about is actually there's two things I want to talk about but I, I want to talk about highlights so you can hit a button to highlight on and off this will highlight your characters in blue friendlies in green neutrals in orange like rats and stuff I don't think there's any around and all enemies in red so um, actually green is friendly neutrals orange um, I'm not in combat of course but this is handy for some people I've been playing with some friends and they've ended up 
like especially when I'm standing right next to other enemies, like pretend these are some skeletons or something, and he's trying to fireball or flare maybe an enemy, and instead he ends up flaring me like multiple times, and that's no fun because you don't want that to happen. So having these highlights on can help you differentiate like these really close up, um, close up clicks. You can actually have these on all the time if you want. This is under options, game, and it's under here, highlights, peace highlights, combat highlights, tactical highlights. So I don't like these on all the time, but if you want, you can have them on all the time. Um, personally, I just have them on a toggle. So um, I can switch them on when I want, inside or outside of combat. But uh, that's pretty handy. Another thing about the camera is you, by default you can press B and it changes to this top-down camera mode. I think it's called tactical view. Um, and I think by default, yeah, by default, um, it just highlights things. I don't like this view. I think it's a little weird, but some people are maybe are used to this sort of traditionally top-down view. I don't like it, but it's there for those who want it. Uh, lastly, let's talk about resurrecting. Um, actually going to just kill one of my own characters here. It'll be faster using this guy. Damage buff him. He's got two-handed. And uh, I'm just gonna kill my friend here. Okay, now she's dead. In fact, she just... all that's left of her is this little pile of ash. So, um, they, this is something they changed on release, not on the beta, so it kind of confused me at first. But before you could only resurrect people in place, like exactly where they were, but now that's not true. You can actually res teleport them. See, it says choose to teleport. You're like, what? I don't have a teleport. But what you can do is you click on your your dead person, and then you can actually choose where to teleport them. So maybe she just died in a bunch of fire or poison, or maybe in a whole cluster of enemies, and it's like, unless you have morning person, which reses you at full health, you don't want to res, generally speaking, right where you died. So let's pretend these are enemies, she died here, she needs to heal up a bit, let's put her behind me. And then she's resurrected Aww. over there. And uh, she's back in the fight, low health, but uh, you know, now when it's her turn rolls around, she can heal up and uh, get back in the action. So that's an easy way to safely res people. And checking my notes. I believe that's everything I wanted to talk about with tips and tricks, but hopefully that was helpful for new players. So go out there, have fun, and see you around. Oh, don't forget to subscribe, ask questions in the comments, buy the game if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for another tutorial. Thanks.